Welcome to D&D Builds, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons & Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. Today, we're going to be building the God of War himself, Kratos. If you want access to the character sheets for any of my builds, check out my Patreon like these amazing people here. And a special shout out to my Dungeon Master level patrons, Devin Happy, Benjamin, Tristan Bennett, and GameStake, who get additional perks including having D&D sessions hosted by me that I stream right here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch. And considering we're talking about the God of War, it's only fitting that I pay respects to my God tier level patron, Kilo Kilo. He's so incredible, I really can't thank him enough. Now let's dive in and build the Ghost of Sparta himself, Kratos. He's an absolute icon of the game world and he's got some incredible weapons and if you stick around till the end of the video I'll let you know exactly what magic items I would use to replace some of Kratos's epic weapons but when building Kratos the first thing we got to do is pick a race and that's gonna be pretty easy because he is the son of Zeus granted he does murder his dad but it's still his dad nonetheless so if you want to be connected to the gods the best race to go is Asamar. this will grant you celestial resistance giving you resistance to necrotic damage which will help when you're dealing with Hades and radiant damage for when you're dealing with the rest of the gods. You also get healing hands to do a little bit of healing and light bearer so you know the light cantrip. Also when you choose a race you get to choose a sub race and I was really tempted to grab Fallen Asamar. They deal some necrotic damage when they activate their Asamar abilities but with the newer God of War games I can't help but think of Kratos as a very protective father so we're going with Protector Asamar. Choosing this sub race makes it so that when you hit level 3 in the build you can activate your Radiant Soul giving yourself a flying speed and dealing extra radiant damage to one target once per turn with an amount equal to your level. Choosing a background for Kratos, I actually really like the idea of leaning into the fact that he's a ghost of Sparta and haunted by his past, so I'm going to grab the haunted one background. We get a couple skill proficiencies that we get to choose from a limited list, and we're going to grab religion because you're dealing with gods constantly, it's best if you know who you're fighting, and survival because Kratos knows how to survive, although usually that skill is more used for tracking and living in the wilderness. It also grants you two languages, and since you already know Celestial from your race, we'll grab Primordial to talk to the Titans, and Abyssal to deal with the more demonic side if you ever come across it. You're also granted a Monster Hunter's Pack, one Trinket of Special Significance, which there's plenty of times that that pops up in the series, and then a set of Common Clothes, which you're probably never going to use. This even has a particular personality trait listed as I put no trust in divine beings, and that's just too fitting for Kratos to go with anything else. And before we pick a class, let's jump into some stats. Kratos is pretty damn buff, so we're going to take our strength, bump it to 14, and then take the two points that would have gone into charisma because Kratos is kind of grouchy, and put it into our strength thanks to Tasha's. Then we're going to take our dexterity, put it into 14, so that way you're a little more agile, and then take our constitution, bump it to 15, and then take the plus one that would have gone into wisdom and make it so you're a little more hardy, bumping our constitution to 16. Using point by, we still have a couple points left over, so we'll round out our intelligence to 10 because you're not dumb, but you do have to solve some puzzles, and take your wisdom and also round it out to 10 because you are fairly aware of your surroundings. That leaves our charisma at 8, which kind of makes sense, you're a bit grouchy, and you don't usually get along very well with people. Now it's time to choose a class, and if you've ever played a God of War game, you know that Kratos has an ability called Spartan Rage. And there's no better class to choose when you're dealing with Rage than Barbarian. Barbarians get the largest amount of starting health out of any class in D&D because they have a D12 for their hit dice. At level 1 of Barbarian you get access to light armor, medium armor, and shields. And even though in the early games we don't really see Kratos wearing any armor at all, in the more recent games he is wearing what is the equivalent of medium armor because he's wearing things like breastplates or even half plate. And we see him using a pretty awesome shield as well. So all of these proficiencies work perfectly. And on top of this you have proficiency with pretty much all weapons, and then you get saving throws and strength and constitution. And finally you get to choose two skills. We're definitely going to grab athletics, and then we're going to grab perception because it's just so freaking helpful in most D&D campaigns. You get to choose some starting equipment here, and while I won't dive into the full-blown Blades of Chaos or that epic axe that you have in the new God of War, at least not yet because I'll be talking about them towards the end of the build, we do want to give you something similar, and we're going to be following the path of the newer games, starting with that axe, saving the Blades of Chaos for a little later. So pick up a battle axe as your starting equipment, and then find yourself a shield whenever you get the chance. At level 1 of Barbarian, you get Rage, allowing you to use your bonus action to just go in a 
full-blown rage-like state, giving you advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, and giving you an additional boost to any melee weapon attacks that use strength. Currently, that range damage is a bonus too, but it goes up as you level up in Barbarian. Lastly, it gives you resistance to pretty much all normal physical damage. The only trick here is that you can't concentrate or cast any sort of spells if you're in a rage. And as of right now, it only lasts for one minute, and you can only use it twice per day. Also, at level one, you get unarmored defense, allowing you to have your armor class equal 10, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your constitution modifier, making your current AC 15, and then once you finally find that shield, it'll be bumped up to 17. Then at second level of Barbarian, you get Danger Sense, making you just very aware of your surroundings and having a bit of a sense that something bad's about to happen, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws against traps and spells that you can see. Also at second level, you get Reckless Attack, giving you advantage on attacks for that turn. The only downside is that it also gives advantage to anybody that's trying to attack you as well, but it only pertains to melee attacks, so you can use it pretty wisely. At level three of Barbarian, you get to use one more Rage per Long Rest, and you get to choose a Primal Path or a Subclass. I was actually really tempted to grab Storm Herald, because there's some cool abilities that Kratos uses where he's just kind of raining down lightning around him, and that's something that would lean much more towards Storm Herald. But there's no way I can avoid Path of the Zealot. Path of the Zealot is all about your connection to godly powers. You can either be inspired by a god, or in Kratos' situation, we're going to do it in spite of them. And this is especially true since we chose an Asimar, and we can use our godly powers within us at level 3 as well, to be able to use our Radiant Soul. But when we choose this subclass, we get the feature Divine Fury. So now while you're raging, the first creature you hit on each of your turns with a weapon attack takes extra damage equal to 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level. The extra damage has to be either Necrotic or Radiant, and we have to choose it now, so we're going to stick with Radiant. Also at third level, we get Warrior of the Gods. And I would probably do a little edit here and say Warrior Against the Gods, but that's just semantics. This feature makes it so your soul is marked for endless battle. So if anybody tries to use a spell to bring you back to life, the caster doesn't need any material components to cast it. This is surprisingly accurate considering you do fight your way out of the underworld more than once. Then at fourth level of Barbarian, we get an ability score improvement, and instead of increasing any of our stats, we're actually going to take a feat, and we're going to grab Dual Wielder. Kratos is constantly using his Blades of Chaos in each hand, and there's a few interesting ways I really want to pull this off, and the only way to do it is by picking up this feat. It makes it so you get plus one to your armor class while wielding separate melee weapons in each hand, and you can use two weapon fighting even when a weapon isn't considered light, which usually you can only dual wield if it's a very light weapon, but you're pretty beefy and strong, so you get to ignore that. Now we can start messing around with the idea of the Blades of Chaos. While I'm still saving the magic item for the end of this build, if you want something that can at least feel similar as far as play style, even if we do have to use our imaginations a little bit, I was thinking about it like this. Those Blades of Chaos are actually pretty short probably about the same distance as either a short sword or a dagger. We're going to lean into the idea that they are daggers, and the dagger's damage dice is only 1d4. But the thing about the Blades of Chaos is they do have a bit of reach to them, and you can throw daggers, but they won't come back to you, which is kind of a key feature of the Blades of Chaos. But there's another weapon that you can have access to that is not light, but we don't have to worry about that anymore, that also has a damage dice of 1d4, and it does have reach, and that's a whip. So we can dual wield whips here and just pretend that there's daggers at the end of them because frankly, it would do the same amount of damage anyway. So now you have those Blades of Chaos attached to chains on your arms, and those chains, thanks to our feet, will grant us that plus one AC. And while your Rage is active, you can currently do two attacks, once as your action and once as your bonus action, although you still can't add your strength to the damage on your offhand attack, at least not yet. But still, just to make up for it, you can add your Rage damage to each of those attacks, which also helps offset the low damage dice. And just to boost it up even more, you can still add your Divine Fury damage of 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level, and your Radiant Soul damage to boost it up even farther. But the two attacks between your action and bonus action is going to upgrade when you hit 5th level of Barbarian, because that's when you get extra attack, allowing you to attack twice as your action instead of once. Also at 5th level of Barbarian, you get fast movement, boosting your movement speed by 10 feet. Then at 6th level of Barbarian, you get a Zealot feature called Fanatical Focus, allowing you to re-roll a saving throw once per Rage. Also at this level, you get one more Rage per Long Rest. Then at 7th level of Barbarian, you get Feral Instant instinct, granting you advantage on initiative rolls because you're so aware of your surroundings. Then at 8th level of Barbarian, we get another ability score improvement, and again, instead of using the ability score improvement, we're going to take another 
feet. We're going to grab Fighting Initiate, so that way we can use two weapon fighting. Now you can add your strength modifier to the damage of your offhand attack. Then at ninth level of Barbarian, you get access to Brutal Critical, allowing you to roll one extra dice whenever you crit on an attack roll. This won't really help too much if you're using the Blades of Chaos with their little 1d4s, but when you are using your Battle Axe, this will grant you an additional 1d6 on top of the 1d6 you get from critting if you're one-handing it, or additional 1d8s if you're wielding it with two hands. Also at this level, your Rage Damage gets increased from plus 2 to plus 3, which is a nice little boost, especially since you're attacking three times. Then at 10th level of Barbarian, you get Zealous Presence from being a Zealot Barbarian. As a bonus action, you can unleash a Battle Cry infused with Divine Energy, giving up to 10 allies within 60 feet of you advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the start of your next turn. This is really only useful for the most recent games of God of War, where you have the aid of your son or boy. I can't even begin to compare to that insanely deep and epic voice actor of Kratos. Then at 11th level of Barbarian, you get Relentless Rage. So if you get knocked down to zero hit points while you're raging and you don't die outright, you can make a DC 10 con save. If you succeed, you drop to one hit point instead and you can keep using this, but each time you do, the DC is increased by five, at least until you finish a short or long rest. And considering how hard it is to kill Kratos, this only makes sense. Then at 12th level of Barbarian, we get access to an ability score improvement, and we're finally gonna use the ability score improvement for an ability score, boosting our strength by two points. Also at 12th level, you get one more rage per long rest, and then at 13th level, you get another brutal critical dice. So now when you do crit, you can roll two additional dice on top of the critical dice you already rolled. Then at 14th level of Barbarian, you get the feature from being a zealot, Rage Beyond Death. So now you are an unstoppable killing machine. Even once you do go to zero hit points, you can just keep attacking and going non-stop as long as you're still in a rage. You still have to make death saves and the effect of death can still happen as soon as you finish raging, but while that battle is going on, you are just unstoppable. And this is only amplified by the feature you get at 15th level, Persistent Rage. So now your rage is so fierce that it only ends early if you fall unconscious or you choose to end it, making you practically invincible. Then at 16th level of Barbarian, you get access to another ability score improvement, so we're gonna max out our strength finally, and your bonus damage from being in a rage gets boosted from plus three to plus four. Then at 17th level of Barbarian, you get one more brutal critical die, making it so that when you crit, the total amount of dice that you get to roll for damage is five dice. If you're two-handing your battle axe, that is 5d8 and a pretty considerable amount of damage. But even if you're using your Blades of Chaos, 5d4 ain't too bad either. Also at this level, you get one more Rage to use per long rest, and then at 18th level of Barbarian, you get Indomitable Might, making it so that whenever you roll a Strength check, if it's less than your Strength score, which is currently 20, you can now use the Strength score in place of the total. Then at 19th level of Barbarian, you get another Ability Score improvement, so we're going to boost up our Constitution, adding to our Health and our Armor class if you're deciding to go without any armor. But if you're going based off the newer games, you probably have a decent set of medium armor by now. Then at 20th level of Barbarian and the last level of this class, you can use your rage an unlimited amount of times and you get the feature Primal Champion, boosting your strength and constitution score by four points and increasing the maximum that you can have in those scores. Usually you max out at 20, but now your constitution is suddenly 22 and your strength is 24. So every attack you have while you're in rage now gets plus 11 damage from your rage damage plus your strength modifier, which if you have both of your blades of chaos or your whips, you can do three times per turn, meaning that before you roll any dice, you're doing 33 damage. But we get to boost that even more because your Divine Fury allows you to add a 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level, which is 1d6 plus 10. And if your Radiant Soul is active, you can add another plus 20 to that first attack as well. So without rolling a single dice, if you're using your Blades of Chaos to attack three times in a round, you are dealing 33 points of normal whip damage and another 30 points of radiant damage, plus an additional 3d4 from the whips themselves and an additional 1d6 from that divine fury, which is a pretty considerable amount of damage output. But if we want to go on the hunt for some true weapons for the god of war himself, we gotta find some magic items. Kratos uses plenty of magic items throughout the god of war series. I mean, he uses wings of flying and the head of a gorgon and all sorts of other stuff, but we're just gonna focus on the axe and the blades of chaos. The axe has runes and is 
very well crafted and enhanced by the dwarves, so it's only fitting we grab the Axe of the Dwarvish Lords. It is a plus three battle axe, and this axe is so epic that it actually functions as three other magic items simultaneously. It grants you the features of the Belt of Dwarven Kind, boosting your constitution by two points to a maximum of 20, but because of your 20th level Barbarian feature, you're still at 24, which also boosts your armor class. It gives you advantage on charisma checks when dealing with dwarves. You gain the ability to speak, read, and write dwarvish. You have dark vision to a range of 60 feet if you don't already have it, and you have advantage on saving throws against being poisoned and giving you resistance to poison damage. And lastly, the most fitting feature of this, especially for the more recent God of War games, is that while you're also attuned to this, you have a 50% chance each day at dawn of growing a full, thick beard. And even if you have a beard, it is visibly thicker than the one you already had. The other magic item that gets folded into this magic item is the Sword of Sharpness, making it so that when you crit with an attack, you deal an extra 14 slashing damage. And you can roll an additional d20, and if you roll a 20 on that dice, you're cutting off one of your enemy's limbs. The weapon can also shed a dim light in a 10 foot radius, and if you're dealing any damage to objects, the damage is automatically maximized. And the very last magical item that gets folded into this magic item, which has the most key features about it, is the Dwarven Thrower. It adds the throne property to the weapon, which does have some downsides being a barbarian because you can't add your rage damage unless it's a melee attack, but this tries to make up for it a little bit because when you hit with that ranged attack, it deals an extra 1d8 of damage, or 2d8 if it's against a giant, and then the axe is immediately returned to your hand right after you throw it, which is just insanely spot on for your axe. There are some other random benefits that you get, like gaining proficiency with artisan tools related to blacksmithing, brewing, and stonemasonry, immunity to poison damage, the ability to conjure an elemental, and even the ability to use the teleport spell, but only if the destination you're planning to go to is underground. But we really care about the other magic items that are included in the features of this item. Now, if you want to try and make the Blades of Chaos, the best way I could see to do it was use the Blade of Broken Mirrors. But this is actually a dagger, so if you got it early enough, you could even ignore or grabbing the dual wielder feet and it's even described as having a maze like jagged pattern inscribed on the side of it and it looks like jagged stone which seems pretty spot on for the blades of chaos this weapon has three different phases either being dormant awakened or exalted gaining plus one plus two or plus three respectively it grants you some random spells to be able to cast and the more key feature is that when you throw the weapon it comes right back to you just like your axe however this does have the same downside where because you're throwing it and it's not a melee attack, you don't get to use your rage damage. But other than that, it's an insanely spot-on representation of the Blades of Chaos. One last magical thing you can add to Kratos is his tattoos. I know there's actually some very dark meaning behind them, but they are important. So we can use the wondrous item from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, Eldritch Claw Tattoo. This will make it so your unarmed strikes get plus one, and they count as magical, which really works because Kratos can punch pretty damn hard, and it gets the feature Eldritch Eldritch Maul, making your melee attacks deal an extra 1d6 of force damage, and all of your weapon or unarmed strikes can now reach up to 15 feet away, which will open up a whole new avenue of weapons you can use, especially if you're still including the feats that I mentioned earlier in the build. You'll be able to treat almost anything as your Blades of Chaos at that point. Let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below, or if there's any other builds that you want in the future, let me know down there as well. I had actually made a massive vote for what builds I should do for pretty much this entire month over on my Patreon, and Kratos was one of the top votes, and I'll be building some of the other top votes very soon. If you want to be able to place your vote, or if you want access to the character sheets for any of my builds, including this one, you can check out my Patreon, like these incredible people. And a special shout out to my Dungeon Master level patrons, Devin Happy, Benjamin, Tristan Bennett, and Gamestake. They get additional patron perks, including having D&D &D sessions hosted by me that I stream right here on YouTube, as well as over on Twitch. And then an extra special shout out to my God tier level patron on this God of War build, he gets some additional perks, but really, I just can't thank him enough. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as the Ghost of Sparta, Kratos himself, even if you can't quite pull off that incredibly deep voice that his voice actor can.